Federal Judicial Center Orientation Series for United States Appeals Judges. A word of welcome to the federal judicial system. Welcome to this Federal Judicial Center Orientation Program. Though I can't be with you in person today, I hope in the course of years to come to meet many of you individually during your service on the federal bench. Some years ago, Judge Jerome Frank wrote an article entitled, The Cult of the Robe, in which he discussed the unique role of judges in our society. With its connection to history and authority, the robe is a symbol of that position. But of course, becoming a federal judge means more than simply donning a robe. Your service symbolizes what Chief Justice Charles Evans Hughes called our national ideal of justice, the distinctive character of our republic in having a judiciary as one of the three co-equal branches of the federal government. Within this system of three co-equal branches, however, there are important differences between the role of those in the political branches and those in the judiciary. Those who serve in Congress or in the executive branch must constantly take into account, account a variety of political interests and concerns and continually reappraise how these political concerns will affect them and their constituents. Not only is there nothing wrong about legislators responding to political pressure, but if they did not do so, they would soon cease to be legislators. Federal judges, of course, have no such constituency. We're not elected but appointed for what amounts to a life tenure. This tenure is designed to ensure that those who, as Chief Justice John Marshall said, have the duty to say what the law is, should not be influenced by the vagaries of current public opinion, nor captive to the needs of re-election. But another kind of restraint is placed on judges, placed there by the very nature of the judicial process. The judicial process is quite different from the process which obtains in the political branches. Judging is a uniquely deliberative task. A judge hears from both sides of a dispute and renders a reasoned judgment based upon what he conceives to be the merits of the case before him. The restraints imposed on judges by the nature of the judicial process are subtler and often more difficult to adhere to than the restraints imposed on the political branches by the electoral process. But it is absolutely essential that judges do conform to these restraints. The American ideals of respect for the rule of law and equal justice for all are built on them. Each of you has been chosen for what is generally, generally regarded as not only a very important position in our society, but a very interesting and stimulating one. I wish each of you the best of luck in your judicial careers. Thank you, Chief Justice Rehnquist. And on behalf of the board of the Federal Judicial Center, I'm pleased to welcome you to the federal bench. I've already met some of you and look forward to meeting the rest of you during my tenure as center director. At this point in your new career, your main interest is and should be in learning and understanding your responsibilities. In that connection, I'd like to speak briefly about the institution of the federal courts, their governance, and their service agencies. The national policy of the federal judiciary is the sole responsibility of the Judicial Conference of the United States. The Chief Justice chairs the conference. Its members are the chief judge of each circuit court of appeals and the court of international trade, and a district judge elected from each regional circuit. The conference meets twice a year in Washington. Much of its work is done through some 25 committees composed largely of circuit, district, bankruptcy, and magistrate judges. These committees consider issues relating to the court's budget, human resources, space and facilities, automation and security, as well as matters pertaining to the civil, criminal, bankruptcy, and appellate rules. The federal judicial system is too large and too diverse to be administered solely by a group of people sitting in Washington, D.C. That is why much of the system's operation is the responsibility of the judicial councils of the circuits. 
A circuit council is chaired by the chief judge of the circuit and includes an equal number of court of appeals and district judges. The councils monitor the state of business of the courts in the circuit, including any backlogs. They approve district court operating plans in such areas as jury utilization and court reporters, and they play a key role in acting upon complaints, charging a judge's disability or misconduct. The chief judge of the circuit also has the statutory duty to call a conference for all judges, usually with members of the bar, at least every other year. These circuit conferences are to consider ways to improve the administration of justice. They are also a valuable bridge between bench and bar and a source of ideas and innovations. There are two agencies within the judicial system that will primarily be of service to you throughout your judgeship. The Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts, usually known as the AO. It is managed by a director who is appointed by the Chief Justice after consulting with the Judicial Conference of the United States. The AO administers the federal court's budget. It is responsible for space, facilities, and personnel matters. It collects and publishes extensive statistics on all aspects of the judiciary's activities and supports the judiciary's automation programs and its libraries. This is only a brief outline of its activities. The annual report of the director further describes the work of the AO and it shows you the various ways that agency can be helpful to you. Now a word about the Federal Judicial Center. The center is the federal court's agency for continuing education and research on judicial administration. Its policies are set by a board chaired by the Chief Justice. The board's members are seven judges elected by the Judicial Conference of the United States as well as the director of the AO. The center provides orientation programs, like this seminar, as well as numerous seminars, workshops, and other educational programs on a wide range of substantive and managerial topics. Center programs are developed to serve the needs of judges and their staffs. We will send you information about particular programs for judges as they're scheduled. You can also find information in our booklet, Services for Judges from the FJC, which we update annually. The Center, as well as the AO, produces television programs for judges and court staff, which are broadcast over the Federal Judicial Television Network, the FJTN. Both agencies also make extensive information available to you over the JNet, the judiciary's intranet. Our annual report, a copy of which we earlier sent to you, provides details about the various facets of our work. You've also received our catalogs of publications and of audio-visual media programs. Although some periodicals will come to you automatically, all items in these catalogs are available to you upon request. If there's anything you need that we can provide, just ask us. If you have any comments or suggestions, just tell us. I end as I began by welcoming you to this orientation seminar. In a larger sense, I want to welcome you to the federal judiciary. Membership is a high honor. It is also a serious responsibility. Those who have come before you have served with courage, diligence, and dedication, and they have kept this judicial system viable, strong, and independent. Each of you has been given a unique opportunity to do your part and to serve our country. I know you will find it challenging and rewarding. I wish you well.